Howdy everyone, I'm Adrian, welcome to episode 2 of our Let's Talk Commander podcast. I'm Zach, and welcome everybody to our podcast. And today, we're, it's been a week since spoiler season for Ikoria and Commander 2020 ended. Officially so, ended. Yeah, officially ended. So today we're just going to talk about our favorite cards and some of our favorite commanders from the set overall. And before we do that... Let's just, I just want to recap all the new things that we got from the upcoming set. We have two new, or three new mechanics. Wow, that's a lot, actually. We have... Oh, in a whole set? Yeah. Well, two yeah, sets. We have Mutate, which is if you cast this spell for its Mutate cost, put it over or under target non-human creature you own. They mutate into the creature on top, plus all abilities from under it. It's it's a bit confusing. We'll go over that. We'll we'll try our best to explain it the best. <laughs> we also have another new mechanic called Companion. If this card is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. We'll get more into that topic later. And we also have new keyword counters, such as Vigilance, Death Touch, Lifelink, Haste, Flying, Menace, First Strike, Hexproof, Trample, and Reach. These counters pretty much give the creature the given ability. It's really interesting how this works because it's different from auras because you can just give it to it or it's not an end of turn ability. Once it has a counter on it, it has that ability. It, it's, so like it's like a, a permanent basis kind of thing. Mutate and keyword counters. It's like auras and enchantments with extra steps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> with extra steps. And we do have a returning mechanic, which is... Cycle. Cycle, it's a one-for-one one ability. You pay the cycle cost of a card, discard the card to draw a card. And now we're going to talk about one of our first subjects, which would be our favorite C20 commander. Um, Zach, you could go first. Oh, I get the honors. Okay. Yep. <laughs> well, probably one of my favorite cards from the new C20 commander besides Calamax, which I did a video on, or a Zaxar, well, now I revealed it, but <laughs> Zaxara that I did a video on. But, you did a um, deck tech on Zaxara. Yeah, but uh, the one besides that would have to be probably Calamax. Uh, he's a, a, a green, blue, and red, and one of any color elemental dinosaur legendary creature. He has a very interesting ability. Uh, when you cast your first instant spell uh, each turn, if he's tapped, you can copy that spell and then choose new targets for the copy which is really good. So essentially for this deck, you'd want to run like a, a, a copy spell uh, type uh, deck with all of those different cards. Like and one of the new cards, the... Twinning Staff. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> but it's other abilities whenever you copy an instant spell, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Calamax. Now this is really good because anyone who runs anything that has to do with copying instant spells or any spells for that matter knows that an ability like this means you could end up getting infinite counters if you just keep copying. So, um, one of the good cards for to use with Calamax is basically you want to have cards that allow you to tap it so that you can constantly be able to uh, copy the spells, that the first spell you cast each turn. So, there's cards that work like this, like uh, Paradise Mantle, so you give it the ability to tap for mana. Uh, also, uh, Cryptolith Rite, because I'm assuming that along with this and all your other instants, you're running a bunch of other creatures, so this gives that ability to uh, tap as well. And uh, what you want to be able to do with this card, especially if you're running it as a commander, you want to have cards that go along with it that allow you to attack w with its damage without being able to actually have it attack because it'll be tapped so that you copy. So cards like uh, Chandra's Ignition would be one, uh, Fling, ones that deal its uh, damage without having to have it actually attack. Now, Calamax is really good for ramping cards as well because you can uh, growth spiral and you can use all these different like reverberate and twin cast uh, to copy your spells twice and then just keep building the counters onto Calamax. And uh, there's all these other uh, combos where you, uh, if you used e Expansion Explosion, there's a certain combo that you could figure out where you could constantly keep copying spells and then put an infinite amount of counters on Calamax. So I, overall, it's a really good card. I just realized that there's actually a pretty good Planeswalker that, that'd be pretty good for Ant, for Calamax deck. It's one of the um, 
it's one of the common War of the Sparks planeswalkers. His name is Jiang Yangju, Wildcrafter. Oh, the yeah, the one that gives ones with plus one plus one counters. The ability mm-hmm. you to could tap, tap them for any mana. color. Like that'd right. be pretty good. It's definitely handy because you could do that. Um, also, yeah, I think that'd probably be the best one though. Let's move on to my favorite commander from the SC twenty set. Mine would be Gavi Nest Warden for two generic blue, red, white. You get a legendary creature, human shaman, which is a two five, and its abilities read as you may pay zero rather than pay the cycling cost of the first card you cycle each turn. Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a two two red and white dinosaur cat creature token. Which dinosaur cat dinosaur cat tokens are the cutest tokens in the game as of right now. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> it's so interesting. It's a dinosaur it's cat. So it's a weird thing, but I, I like them. Um, yeah. Gabby, I think she's the first official commander that has like actual support for cycling, and I really like that because cycling is a really good underrated ability. It's it's a nice one for one trade. It lets you dig your deck faster than your opponents, obviously. Before most of the popular commanders for cycling, according to EDH Rack, was it was Zer the Enchanter with 255 cycling themed decks, and coming second would be Kaidel Chosen of Krufix, partnered with Bravo Soul Tender with 56 decks. Gavi's I think Gavi is very unique for a Jeskai commander because if you look on like EDH Rack or any Jeskai commander, they're all pretty much the same as in they really support you doing casting non-creature spells or playing some form of control deck besides um what's it gavi i think the only really unique jeskai commanders that don't really support the uh the cast a whole bunch of non-creature spells kind of thing would be ruhan of the fomori and Primacon Sky Rampart, and probably Numot. But besides, besides all those commanders, I think adding Cycling as a new commander, or adding a commander that adds that has supports for Cycling, it adds it adds more diversity to the game. And with more diversity, it will force players to play a different play style and come up with new strategies. That's why I really like Gavi. Some other cards that are good for her, which is Fluctuator from Urza Saga. It's an old card that hasn't really seen a lot of use until recently, where when Gavi was released, the card's price increased, and then people bought it out, and then it just got reprinted. So, stonks. <laughs> yeah, it is. For, um, for not... For the people that don't know, Fluctuator is a 2 mana artifact and it makes it so cycling abilities you activate cost up to 2 less to cast, or 2 less to activate, which cycling abilities usually cost 2 or less, so that's like free cycling every single time. And there's other cards that support cycling, like New Perspectives. New Perspectives is a 5 generic blue enchantment. When New Perspective enters a battlefield, draw 3 cards. As long as you have 7 or more cards in hand, you may pay 0 rather than pay cycling cost. Like, those are great cards that never really saw play until Gavi came out, really. Because th- I think those are the best cards for cycling. And we'll move on to the other subject, which is... Our favorite card from the Ikoria set. Zach, take it away. Okay, mine is probably a pretty obvious one because I made this point in uh, my Spore deck tech. No, it's it's still not Spore Frog. <laughs> we're we're going to... You have to bring that up every time, don't you? Spore. No, but my favorite card from Ikoria would probably have to be the Uzalith or Ozolith, however you want to call it. I think it's Uzalith because I think it's like kind of oozing the counters in a sense. I, 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 does it have one or two O's or like at the beginning? One. Okay, so then I, I think it's Ozolith. Ozolith. But it does look like an ooze. It does look like yeah, it does I don't look know. like ooze. Well, I call it Ozolith, I guess. Well, yeah, Ozolith. it's fine. 
It's a legendary <laughs> art- artifact, uh, and it costs only uh, one of any color. Uh, whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, it, if it had counters on it, you can put those counters on the Ozolith. Uh, Ozolith. <laughs> At the beginning of combat on your turn, Warfrog? if the Ozolith has uh, counters on it, you may move all counters from the Ozolith onto target creature. Now that is a really good ability for your for. Um, You're an Animar player. <laughs> I'm an Animar player for one, but also it even works for Calamax because uh, commanders that run with that that have uh, counters on it that help its abilities. Um, if it dies and ends up going back to the command zone, you can bring it back and put those counters back on it. Not to mention uh, the fact that there's all these new cards and, and old cards that it works with as well, like X costing Hydras. It's a fantastic for that one because if, let's say, you had a bunch of Hydras on the battlefield and they end up all getting like board wiped off the board, you could put all of their counters onto, onto the Ozolith and then when next time you cast a Hydra, you could put all those counters onto that one and then now it's like quadruple the strength. It's, it's really crazy that you can save those counters on this on this artifact and then or there's what, other cards like uh what something the, cool you could do is like if you have like a whole bunch of counters on calamax say say he has like a hundred counters you could fling him kill someone and then when he returns to the battlefield he could have those 100 counters on him again with ozolith right which and would be pretty they don't cool get lost just by it dying yeah it's kind of like a regenerate for the counters it works really well um, and then there's a new card in Ikoria, Shark Typhoon, which is also a cycling card, I believe, as well. But mm-hmm. it, it's, uh, it's a really good card because it creates uh, XX uh, Sharks, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. It, it, no, yep, it creates XX Sharks. Yeah, it creates tokens, which uh, are equal to uh, when you cast a, a, cre- a non-creature spell with uh, its converted mana cost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's crazy, because then if they end up dying, uh, you can just keep putting those counters back on them. So it, it, it's just great, because you can save all those counters as well. Really good card. And then obviously, uh, like like I said, with uh, Animar Soul of the Elements, there's so many possibilities, because uh, you need to keep the counters on there so that you can keep your uh, creature casting uh, to a, a really uh, low cost. And whenever he ends up dying, it always ends up, you lose the counters, and then you have to bring him back and re-get the counters up. With the Ozolith, you can just put them on as he dies, and then when he comes back, you can move him right back on and have the same amount. So it's it's pretty great. You know, it'd be good for Ozolith, too, would be um, Walking Ballista. If you can just yeah. store up counter at a creature and it dies, cast Walking Ballista and put all those counters on it, you could really surprise players and just kill them. So what would probably be your favorite card from the Ikoria set? Mine would have to be Emergent Ultimatum. It's one of the new ultimatums. It, as like any ultimatums, it's powerful, but it's really expensive. Emergent Ultimatum, it's a 2 black, 3 green, 2 blue sorcery. Its effect is search your library for up to 3 monocolored cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards, shuffle that card into your library, you may cast the other cards without paying their mana cost, and then after that you exile Emergent Ultimatum. So, this one, it's... I think it's one of those you cast that you win the game cards. Because you're playing Saltai, you're going to be playing... So, you have green for the ramp and mana fixing. So, that's not going to be a problem. And you're playing blue, so most likely, if you're you're if you're playing those colors, you get to tutor for two spells, and you cast them both for free. So let's say you cast the Emergent Ultimatum, you can look up for you can look for Omniscience, Jace, Wielder, Mysteries, expropriate. and don't forget about Enter the Infinite. You you could do Expropriate, but. But you, you can more or less get at least Omniscience or Enter the Infinite and and. Uh, and win. Yeah. Because uh, either way, the third card. if if Jace is chosen to get shuffled back into your library, you get to cast Omniscience and enter the infinite for free. So then, you draw out your whole deck. And then obviously vice versa. If someone ends up putting the Omniscience back, then you get Jace. And basically, yeah, and you enter have the right the cards so you could win deck, drawing out your deck. No matter what yeah. they choose, it's going to end up being like a win game for you. Mm-hmm. Or if you play 
um, competitive EDH or CEDH, you get to, you can get demonic consultation, enter the infinite and Thassa's Oracle or Lab Maniac, and either way, you're gonna win by drawing out your whole whole deck. I think personally, though, as good as this card is, I don't think that it's an it'll be an auto include in all decks. As powerful as it is, I think. It only being able to search for like mono colored cards is very restrictive, which is which which is good because that makes a, a card a bit balanced. Because if you could just search for like any card, it, it would be insane. <laughs> yeah, that would seem kind of broken. My other, my second favorite card would have to be the Song of Creation. For one generic, a green, blue, red, it's an enchantment. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. Whenever you cast a spell, draw two cards. At the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Like, that's an awesome card. For me, I see. I I like to compare it to a card like the Immortal Sun. It's a six mana artifact, and it makes it so all your spells cost one less to cast. Creatures you control get plus one plus one. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. And players can activate Planeswalker abilities, but ignore that. But the three other abilities, I think it's equal to the Immortal Sun. What I like about it is mostly because whenever you cast a spell, you draw two cards. Like, having that ability in Commander is so useful because you could cast any spell. You, it's like paying, it's like you're paying one mana to draw two, two cards. And that's, to, to me, I think that's insane, but... The downside of at the beginning of your end step, you discard your hand, which there's lots of ways to get around that, like with Library of Lang, which with Library of Lang, Library of Lang is, um, its effect is if you were to discard a card, you can choose to put those cards or that card that you're going to discard into your graveyard on or, or on top of your library. Or you can use cards like Sundial of the Infinite, which immediately ends your turn, so you bypass the beginning of your end step, so you don't have to discard your hand. Mm. And have, so uh, that... Oh, you want to say something? I was gonna, yeah, well, I have two other cards that I find really interesting from Commander 2020. Oh, all right. Let's go ahead. About. So yeah, the one is what we mentioned earlier is uh, Twinning Staff, which uh, works really well with uh, Calamax or any other kind of copy uh, deck. It allows you to, uh, if you copy a spell one or more times, you can copy it for an extra time. It's and a then, three mana artifact, by the way. Yeah. So it's that's three, so it's cheap. It's easy to get and out. It's extra copy, and then it also has the ability to just uh, pay seven tap, and then you can copy an instant or sorcery. The seven seems kind of expensive, but you got to forget like with its ability, you're basically paying to copy a spell twice, which is really mm -hmm. good. So it works good with cards like Narset's uh, Reversal to add more copies, uh, the Reverberate and Twin Cast. But then uh, really good cards for it are uh, Swarm Intelligence. So it automatically, Swarm Intelligence gets an extra uh, uh, copy when it's on the field. Uh, Thousand Year Storm because you're just Riku. getting that extra copy. Riku. And then obviously <laughs> really Rico's a really good commander yeah. to uh, run this card with. Uh, it, probably one of the best because, I mean, Definitely. while Kalanax is good. I mean, it works probably best with Riku because you can just pay to copy any spell. Yeah, because that's then, a free activation, another yeah, free activation, I guess. Basically, and then the other one that I probably think is another one of my favorites, just because I, I think it's kind of a weird mechanic, is the Lava Brink Floodgates. Uh, it's a red and three of any color artifact. Uh, it, you can tap it to add two red mana, which is just good in itself. But then also it has the ability that at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player may put a Doom Counter on Lava Brink Floodgates or remove a Doom Counter from it. Then if it has three or more Doom Counters on it, sacrifice it, and then when you do it, deals six damage to every creature. So it's kind of like a back and forth between you and your opponent to either put a Doom Counter on or remove it, depending on what you want to do, and you're basically trying to hold the dam close so that it doesn't overflow and end up just wiping the board. <laughs> that's kind of cool, damage. actually, now that so you just, talked about it like that. Yeah, it is, because that's basically what you're doing. You, you, you're, like, 
it, it's a, it's a, it's as if there's a hole in the dam and you keep putting like boards and nailing it up mm-hmm. to like close it and then your opponent's like taking it down and you got to keep doing it and then at some point someone's going to end up taking off just enough doom count or putting on just enough doom counters that they can sacrifice it and then when they do it deals six damage because it's one of those it's... things too where it's a it's a quiet upkeep thing that when the board gets really big you might not even notice it's there and then your opponent ends up putting on an extra That's counter true. and then sacrificing it and you can't keep up with it the whole time then it ends up just basically overflowing and it's a really let's cool not forget mechanic. that this dam is filled with lava not water it's lava <laughs> yeah lava it's gonna <laughs> it's kill lava. everything yeah, it's gonna kill everything. It's like it's like a board wipe waiting to happen. It's a board wipe mm-hmm. you can stop, but also you have to be attentive because if you forget, then it's not gonna end up good. Mm-hmm. So now we move on to what's really cool about uh, this new Ikoria set is the uh, tri cycling lands. The triomes or the tricycle tricycles tricycles. <laughs> we get new lands. They're like the. I want to say the Tarkir lands. Yeah, they're like the Tarkir lands. I I think those are the Tri lands. I'm pretty sure. I, I don't remember. That. Yeah, it, it's 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 an old. It's a pretty old. Not like pretty the old, but Mystic it's, Monastery it's a, and like those. Yeah, cards. Mystic Monastery. Yeah. yeah, but we get five of them, each being three color. Each being each able to produce three colors, and what's special about them is that they each have the the land type that the colors they can produce and they have cycling so one of the lands <clears throat> we have the indatha triome which it enters a battlefield tap cycling for three it and it's for abzan colors so it produces white black and green mana and it still counts as a plane swap in forest we have the ketria triome which is for teamer so it produces blue, green, red, and it's a forest island mountain. We have, we have the, the uh, I got this the Ragrin You want to pronounce triome. that? <laughs> the Ragrin Triome. Uh, yeah. it's, it's Jeskai, so it adds blue, uh, red, and white, and it has uh, the same cycling ability, and it enters tapped. Uh, the Savi Triome, and that's what what guild would that be? Mardu. Mardu. It's a red, yep. white, and black, and has cycling. And then uh, Zagoth Triome, Triome, which is the Sultai, Sultai uh, enters tapped, the same ability. So they're all uh, basically the same, and then add the, the, the three colors. Okay. What's great about these lands is because, um, because since they still count as, like, you know, like the land types, like the plains, forest, whatever, they, um,. They can make it so your lands, like, um, I forgot what they were called. They're like the, the lands that came out with Innistrad, where they enter the battlefield tap unless you control, like, the type of land. Oh, I think that's yeah. what's, you know what I'm talking about? I, I think that's what's great about them. I those actually. Oh, no, no, the, some of, the, those are reprints. They re- got reprinted in Dominaria, and I'm pretty sure most of them came out. Like Isolated Innistrad. Chapel and uh, ones like that. But, like, that yeah. still is good because, yeah, and then you have the uh, colors. So. Yeah, that and if you don't need it, you can just cycle it to draw a card, which is great. Right, and, it, and especially the, the uh, Jeskai one would work perfectly with uh, Davi. All right, so let's, we're going to move on to the next topic, which would be talking about the new mechanics. So, again, we're going to go, we're going to start off with Mutate and Again, mutate is if you cast this spell for its mutate cost, put it over or under target non-human creature you own. They mutate into the creature on top plus all abilities from under it. Mutate, it's pretty much uh, an, an alternative way to cast a creature. So it could either, the mutate cost can either cost less than the creature's original mana cost or more depending on what the ability is. Mutate, it's a, uh, I don't, it's, it's still it's an confuses interesting me. new mechanic. It is it's, interesting. I have to probably uh, play it to really grasp how it's yeah, collectible. You, it's kind of yeah. one of those things where you really have to see it in play to really get the full understanding of it. Yeah. But there's some, there's some really cool um, interactions you can do with Mutate. So I did find out where if you were, say you had like 
a stack of creatures, like, all mutated. If you were to bounce that creature, they would, like, un unmutate, I guess. So, like, say you had three, three creatures all mutated. If you were to blink that, they'd come back onto the battlefield as three separate creatures. That's really Which good. I think is pretty yeah. cool. I mean, if you consider it, like, if you had it for Flash and then you, like, uh made like three blockers instead of one yeah that's i think that's really, really cool it, i don't know if that works with board wipe so like would it kill the mutate and everything under or would the would you mean they like, a, like if a cyclonic rift like bounced it back to your hand kind of thing i don't know how. no works. no no okay yeah no actually that could work too because like what if the mutated creature is bounced through the two creatures get bounced with it and then i think because they they're like separate paired together at that point i think that oh they okay, okay. so like hand. they count as one creature so then you'd essentially have to like remutate your stuff. Okay, which I get that. That would actually be really unfortunate. Yeah, I mean you get the mutate effect though, which would be really nice. True. But being cyclonic rift is always unfortunate though. Well, <laughs> <That's>... Yeah. <laughs> All um, right. So. What would probably be oh, your favorite mutate card though? Um, that's tough because a lot of them are really good. I think. With my, how I play, I would go for Nethroy Apex of Death because he has a really cool name. Apex of Death sounds really cool. And his ability is whenever this creature mutates, return any number of target creature cards with total power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, and um, Nethroy Apex of Dex is a two generic white, black, green, legendary creature, cat, nightmare, beast. <laughs> and he's a 5-5. Five five. His mutate cost is 4 generic. A red, or not red, white and green hybrid and 2 blacks. So he's pretty expensive to mutate. But mm -hmm. overall, I think it's worth it considering that you're getting a total of power 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. My favorite would probably have to be the, the Jeskai one the, for blue, red, and white. Uh, Vadrock, Apex of Thunder. He's an elemental dinosaur cat. He so sounds cool, there too. Goes the, he already sounds cool. The dinosaur cats. He's flying dinosaur in first type. strike. Uh, whenever he mutates, you may cast target non-creature card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. Now, that's that's really good. Uh, for, for three uh, mana of different colors, I think that that seems fair. Its mutate cost is uh, two red, a white, or a blue, and one of any color. So it, it's a little bit expensive, but like... It, it, you could probably afford it, and then obviously being able to cast a spell without uh, paying its mana cost is really good. I can, I can already tell in standard, Apex of Thunder is gonna be annoying mainly because you can target Teferi with it, <laughs> and yeah. Teferi is always running wild in standard, making everyone mad. From my experience, because that's Teferi. I'm surprised there's no Teferi card that just wins you the game, honestly. <laughs> Alright, so let's move on to Companions. Uh, companions. How do you feel are... about these? I I don't know. Well, we, it's we iffy. Know, we know like, how some people feel about a certain one, which we'll get yeah. to in, in a minute. But like the other ones, it's a, it's a weird concept. Yeah, because so there's, um, there's, there's restrictions one. on each of them. Yeah, but at the same time, that's a you get a hundred and one cards for your commander right. deck. It kind of depends on useful. how you're building it because in certain mm -hmm. cases, it uh, it can be like kind of unfortunate in certain uh, mm -hmm. cases because there's like, uh, Gudu Doom of Depths is a demon kraken with companion, and it says your starting deck can only contain cards with even converted mana costs. So what would be bad about this particular or if you ran this like uh with your deck and you had this as your companion uh if someone were to void winnower you you basically couldn't cast anything in your deck because they're all even which is kind of broken but then it, there's the opposite which is abash the uh prey piercer which is the opposite where he has odd uh converted mana costs so it's kind of like that one would be good for that but it's also kind of annoying because the cards like this that they're restricting what you're able to play in your main co commander deck and you got to kind of weigh the options of is this a, a a needed card a needed companion for this deck that i'm willing to restrict my cards like this 
Although I hear what's what's good about the companions that you could have them in your ninety nine, and or, or as your commander, and you won't have to go with the companion restrictions, which is kind of nice. But I think what makes companion like every commander player they don't know how to feel about companion because companions they go in your sideboard and and in commander you technically don't have a sideboard that's why like wish cards riches are the ones that wish cards are like they let you tutor for a card that you own from outside the game or like um karn the great creator i think that's the one that lets you search or that lets you get a card from your sideboard they don't really apply to commander but the companions do so it's very confusing how the ruling of it is in commander games right because then there's also like cards like burning wish which will do the same thing to yeah, get cards which from card. outside of the game. So yeah, like I said, you really have to like because I, cards consult like, with your play group, I guess. Right. Yeah. If you want to play those cards, but companions, I think, I think they're all right. Personally, you definitely would have to kind of build because there is a restriction, it. so it's fair. It's not just a okay. I run the colors of this companion. Let me add it. Like you have to be willing to commit to having it be your command companion like that. Unlike because uh, except if the companion's downside is each non land card in your starting deck has a different name. <laughs> yeah, well, which that's would be that's Lutri, for commander. the spell chaser, for one and a generic of blue red blue red. You get a legendary creature, elemental otter three two. It has flash. When Lutri the spell chaser chaser enters a battlefield. If you cast it, copy target instant or sorcery spell you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. <clears throat> and again, the companion's restriction is only each non-land card in your starting deck has a different name. Which, if you're playing commander, is already that's, a thing, because you yeah. can have one of every card in your deck. So that's just... Now, when, when this card got banned, the commander... The commander community, I guess they there was there was a slight uproar because everyone wanted to play it because if it, one it's an otter so everyone loves otters, right? <laughs> and it got banned before it was given a chance to actually be played. Yeah, that's what I kind of hated the most is like it was banned before release, so you couldn't even attempt to see but, if it was as overpowered and like and broken as people would have thought it was going to be because you can put it in any deck that runs these colors. I mean, it it, it was it was going to be an auto include because it was because for is it decks or any colors that have the is it colors, it would have just been you get a it's like a fork or any copy spell in your sideboard you could cast at any time. It would have been like an extra card in your hand, because and and people just auto include it because it doesn't even count as your ninety nine cards either. Because so you can just have it out there, so it doesn't take away from something you could put in your deck. So people would just automatically have it no matter what. Even colors if it that wasn't run like a almost perfect fit for the deck, you know. Yeah, colors that run blue and red are already powerful enough. Like typically, they're pretty powerful. But just being able to have an extra card that they can get. Any time, right, like a a, what a, has been a copy much. spell in your hand for basically any spell you play is kind of broken. Yeah, like you you run a Niv Mizzet deck. Yeah. Like how would how do you think this deck would your deck would have performed if if you just oh, had this it, card it in been your hand fantastic. at all times, pretty much? Yeah. I, for this card, even I probably would have ended up just putting it in my deck if it wasn't a companion like this. Yeah, definitely. It's a perfect card for this because what well, I can copy like when I'm when I'm drawing and wheeling uh, cards with my Niv Mizzet, like I can just copy that, and and I don't, it doesn't have to take away from anything, and I flash it out as well. Like that's kind of broken. Not to mention it's like a three two also, so you could flash out as a blocker too. Like it's it's really good. Can't really get over it. Yeah, it, it is a great card. <laughs> like, I honestly, like, I understand why it was banned, but I'm a little upset at the same time. I, I think least, it's I would have at least liked to see it given a chance. One week. Yeah. That's all I want. I think it's definitely going to be one of those consult with your playgroup kind of cards, I guess. Yeah, for, like, casual. If, yeah, if you it, think casual, it's okay. definitely. I think in CEDH, it would have been uh, another auto-include in Commander 2020, there's uh, some 
other really good cards that we should probably like you know honorable mention what would some of those cards be for you that you think are also just really good that they came out in this set i have two cards one would be arcane signet arcane signet is a two mana artifact you can tap it to add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity which when i found out that was reprinted i was so happy because originally the only way to get arcane signet was if you bought the brawl decks and i i just don't play brawl <laughs> the only time i play brawl is on arena yeah, like if, I, if you get bored. and yeah <laughs> let's not talk about brawl anymore we might no. say something bad and make two people mad <laughs> yeah the two people that play brawl and then another card that really surprised me about the reprint was lightning graves now lightning greaves is a two mana artifact it's an equipment equipped creature has haste and shroud but its equipped cost is zero now that's i think that that's a commander staple because it protects your commander and if your commander has attack trigger say like kalia of the vast or narset you get to do that now i i love that these two cards are just reprinted and I think that they're definitely going to be auto well, yeah, includes I mean, from seemed, at least my decks. It appropriate because they're like cards that uh, would fit in most decks. Like anything that runs creatures probably would want to have a lightning greaves yeah. in it just for the uh, instant haste abilities. And it's cheap too. That and when I build decks, they're typically three to two colors. So with Arcane Signet, I can pretty much, just by having that one Arcane Signet, I pretty much just have all the signets of like the proper signets in that commander's colors because right. usually with a signet you pay one to tap it to add two mana of the certain colors so if any, you just filter really but with just arcane signet you get two you tap it for one of any color in your commander's identity which i think is great there's a so what c20 cards do you want to talk yeah, about uh Zach? the ones that really stuck with me and that like i um saw a lot was one of them was fear, fierce guardianship it's a cool counter spell it says if you control a commander you may cast a spell without paying its mana cost and it's a counter target non-creature spell and that's good that's like that's really good you have your commander out it's it's a free counter i mean it's not countering anything but it's it's still really good with that uh, i mean that ability that's like a free count it's kind of up there with it's like a neg it's like a free negate yeah, it's like a free negate basically and it fierce guardsmanship is a two generic and a blue so it's fairly cheap I mean, yeah you could too, hard cast even if you if don't you have, your, have commander. your commander out but if you did it's just yeah. like a free thing in your hand that you can use in case something happens uh probably another one that i think is interesting is slavar D devourer of the free uh this is a black a red and three of any color uh, cat nightmare what's interesting about this is that it has partner but it's not uh, partner with any other partner it's partner with a specific creature uh, turn the champion of freedom so you have to partner it with that creature you can't just partner it with anything uh, and it has menace and it allows you to sacrifice a human to put a plus one plus one counter on it and it gains indestructible until end of uh, turn now that that's really good that's like that's a really good ability that's really cool it kind of has that yeheni uh, thing to it where it gives it indestructible uh, I like that um, to it are you gonna are you gonna brew with that commander? Is that your no, next one? No, I don't <laughs> think I'm gonna brew with it. I mean, maybe it's not a bad idea. I've never. Uh, I don't think I've made a. Yeah, I haven't made a partner commander deck. I thought about doing it, but it never really ended up uh, becoming a thing. But um, a another uh, good card which I've seen uh, when I was building a deck. Uh, I, I can't remember. What, it was uh, when I was building my version of the Tam deck. It was uh, with a new altar from Commander 2020, uh, uh, Netherborn altar. It's a black and one of any color. You, It's an artifact. You tap it to put a soul counter on it, and then you can put your commander into your hand from the command zone. Then you lose three life for each soul counter on Netherborn altar. So it's basically a way around the commander tax, which is really good. And honestly, the backlash doesn't seem like that much to me. Because it, it, it would be, in my opinion... In, yeah, in Commander, you have 40 Right, life. your life is just as much of a resource. And, I mean, if you're 
if but your commander's already it costly, <laughs> it's going to end up costing you more in mana than it is in life to get it back if it keeps getting bounced back to the command zone. So for that, and it's cheap too, so that's a really good card from this set. Yeah, unless you have a way to remove the counters, it, either way it's still a good card, but if you have a way to remove those counters, <laughs> In this be set, great. with all it'd the different fantastic. types of like uh, keyword counters, yeah, the there's, counter removals. there's at least, yeah. if there's not a way in here, there's a way somewhere to remove it. Like an opposite, like a, an um, an opposite proliferate where you take the counters off. Oh, there's a new land that does that actually. Oh, I I can't remember the name. We'll we'll, we'll put it up on the screen somewhere uh, while we're editing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this card right here but that we can't remember. You you pay one, yeah. You pay one and you get to take a, you remove a counter from something and you get to put it on something else. And it doesn't specify, like, just a plus one, plus one, any I don't, counter? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it says any counter. You get to remove it and put it on something else. So I, that'd be really good, because then, essentially, you're just always paying three to get rid of commander attacks. What about um, Akoria? Were there any other cards that stuck out to you from there? Because I know there were a few more for me. The new four mana enchantments, one of them being Titan's Nest. It's a Sultai enchantment for generic black, green, and blue. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. It's kind of like <laughs> And a, it has an ability. Uh, as, a search for Ascanta ability to it. And it has another ability where you exile a card from your graveyard. Add colorless mana to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast a colored spell without X in its mana cost. Like, wow. Really good. That you get, that's for four mana. You get to ramp yourself and you get to, you pretty much get to surveil. There's, it, when I saw this card spoiled or previewed, I was speechless. I know from this set uh, similar to that enchantment the one that i like uh, probably the most is the jeskai one of a whirlwind of thought uh, w with the narset uh, whenever you cast a non-creature spell you draw a card that's that's just really good card draw i mean especially for just jeskai right. cuz most of the time you are just casting non-creature spells it's mostly non-creatures yeah i don't know if i'd put it in like a, a narset deck because the card draw would kind of take away from casting things without their mana cost but i mean it is Card draw for Narsa is like a double-edged sword, yeah, I think. Yeah, it ends up in your hand. Well, then, the thing is, it's kind of different, too. Because, yes, you can get the card draw, but if you have cards like uh, uh, Ponder and Preordained, you can end up, you know, yeah. putting those things back on and, like, uh, fixing kind of, like, what you would end up revealing with Narset. So there isn't yeah. that. There's a few because takeaways. Because with Narsa, it's like the more cards you draw, they could, it also means the less free stuff you get to cast, which is, like, right. unless you have a way to just... To fix that, uh, then it's like a double-edged sword. I also like, uh, from this set, uh, Fiend Artisan. I think I've seen this already played uh, on Arena since the set has come out. Uh, it gets plus one, plus one for each creature card in your graveyard, and it, and it can cast uh, for uh, a, a black or green, or in a black or green. Uh, so it's relatively, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Uh, you can pay X in a green or black to sacrifice another creature, and you can search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. Now that's really good because if you can dump the mana into it, you can get out any creature in your deck. That's kind of broken. I mean, and then in itself, it already can get a lot of plus one, plus one counters. So like if you were running th uh, a lot of bigger creatures, but you were also running like uh, graveyard recursion kind of stuff, like if you were running your Marin deck, this probably would be a good card for that. One of my other favorite cards with, that I would like to mention is Ruinous Ultimatum. It's another ultimatum, so again, it's pretty powerful but expensive, especially for these callers. It's going to be really difficult to cast this. It's Mardu, so it's two reds, three whites, and two blacks. Destroy all non-land permanents your opponents control. <laughs> it It's the closest... Cyclonic Rift for what I would personally say is the weakest colors in the three color uh, pair ups. 
it's it's a sorcery, but just being able to just it's literally a one sided board white. But in the colors of Mardu it's really expensive because there's not really a lot of ramps. The the most ramp you're gonna get in Mardu is probably Wayfarer's Bobble, the common artifact ramps, and then there's Smothering Tithe. <laughs> right. But I think it's still a great card. I think it's definitely a game winning card for Mardu because most likely you're gonna run some some big beefy dragons or demons or angels. And then there's also um the 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 new planeswalker from Akoria, the legendary planes uh Luca uh, Copper Coat Outcast, the one that you would see like on on a lot of the packs because he's kind of like the 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 creature guide for this set. Uh, he's uh, two red and three of any color. His plus one ability is to exile the top three cards of your library. Uh, creature cards exiled this way gain. You may cast this card from exile as long as you control uh, Luca Planeswalker. Uh, that's really good. Uh, exile target. Uh, it's negative two abilities. Exile target creature you control. Then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher converted mana cost. Uh, put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in, in any random order. That's also a really good ability. And then it's negative seven is each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. Now, if you're running a creature deck, that's just... Oh, it's like the Sarkhan Planeswalker. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like what it is. It's like a creature-based Planeswalker uh, for the red attack. Uh, and I like that ability. But the, it's negative seven. It's really... It's kind of crazy because uh, it you could actually get it uh, to alt a lot quicker than some planeswalkers because it's it's an alt is seven and it's at five, so it only take like two turns if you can keep it protected, and then you can end up probably if you're running a lot of good creatures killing uh, your opponents. So oh, that's a, a really good card. Then since there's lots of um, new ways to play with counters in the set, you could probably like. Again, use that land to possibly like a, yeah, like if there's a, like another move a counter or, onto it. I I don't know how that land works too, honestly. <laughs> also, uh, one of the other cards that I'd like to other I one of the other cards I would like to also mention is Lurus of the Dream Den. It's a companion. It's a one generic and two hybrids of white black white black. It's a legendary creature cat nightmare three two with life link. Its companion ability is each permanent card in your starting deck has a converted mana cost two or less, but it has the other ability of during each of your turns you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. I for one I like to play with my graveyard a lot, if you guys can already tell. I just think that it's a really that's a really interesting companion to play around, considering that you your permanents only cost two or less. It's sort of like a Carador ability, but definitely way weaker. I just think it's such a. It's. I just think it's a really cool card. Yeah, and then obviously uh, another Planeswalker from the set is the the new Nar set of Ancient Way. Uh, that's just a really good card as well. Plus one, uh, you gain two life. You can add a blue, a red, or white. Spend this mana only to cast a non-creature spell. A negative two, draw a card, discard a card. When you discard an online card this way, Narset, the Ancient Way, deals damage equal to that card's converted mana cost to target creature or planeswalker. And then it, in negative six, you get an emblem whenever you cast a non-creature spell. This emblem deals two damage to any target. And if you're running just Kai, this is a really good card to play because you're just going to get so much value. It ramps it. you. And it, yeah, and it ramps you. It does a lot for you. Another card I'd like to mention is Iuna. Apex of Wishes. It's a two green, blue, red. It's Teamer. Legendary creature, beast, elemental, dinosaur. He's a handful. <laughs> His mutate cost is three generic, a hybrid of red and green and two blues. Flying Trample. He's a 6-6. Six, six. His ability reads as, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card. Put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So I just want to mention this because if your library only contains non, if it contains no non-land permanent cards, you can mill yourself out, which 
you're running blue, so you can if you have cards like Thassa's Oracle or Lab Maniac or Jace Wielder of Mystery, so you can win the game by drawing your deck out if you don't have any non land permanent cards left. Which would be a pretty it which could be a win condition for the deck. Yeah. Well, we talked about quite a bit of cards here out of these two sets. Um, you know, to get the overall um, idea of, of this set and, and the new cards that are uh, planning to come out, it did get delayed. Uh, the the release date, it's on Arena now, but I think it's, it's next month. Probably going to be now? next month. Because uh, uh, May 15th. This quarantine May has kind of delayed a lot of things that have uh, been going on. I don't know when. Uh, 2020 is coming out either uh probably would get delayed also it's gonna come closer though yeah we're almost there pretty much yeah i'm i'm really excited for commander legends <laughs> there's a lot of good stuff to happen uh continuing in this year it's the year of commander it really this is. is year of commander also year of quarantine, year of quarantine. so it's like so <laughs> if you it's, had a it's like year of commander but you can't a, play a commander so it's like or something then it's the year of commander constantly because you can't leave your house yeah but yeah so overall i think we've touched a, a lot of the bases what we wanted to, to cover for this episode but i, I did want to mention that we did forget in our uh, first podcast episode when we were talking about some of our uh, favorite cards from our decks we did kind of gloss over uh, your favorite cards from your uh, your decks. So what would what do you think those would probably be? Um, from my artifact deck, my favorite card would definitely have to be Vidalcan Orrery. Seems pretty obvious. Because just being able to cast things at instant speed anytime you want is great. Um, in my artifact deck, I have this synergy where I get to just untap all my land so I could play. So it's always my turn, pretty much, but it's also my opponent's turn. So it's it's all right. For my Jota deck, my favorite card would be... I would have to say Sunbird's Invocation. Because it's like Sunbird's Invocation. It's like a, it's like a surprise box, almost. You cast a spell... You reveal the top cards of your library equal to the spells converted mana cost, and then you get to cast a card with converted mana cost that costs less from the revealed pile. Yeah, that's, that's a really I think good that card. I run it in the uh, yeah. one of my uh, decks as well, and it, it can it can get out some really big stuff. You get yeah, you get so much value just by casting one spell because essentially it's almost like it's almost like all your spells have cascade. Right. And that'd be it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, once again, I, I just want to like uh, thank this uh, community. Spore frog. No, we'll get to that. <laughs> I, I would like okay. to just thank the, the community of people that have been watching us. We, uh, uh, like we said in, in our uh, last video, we really didn't expect there to be as much uh, response to what we've been doing as much as there has been. We. Uh, our channel has gotten up to how many views is it probably now overall? I think two, three hundred. I think something it's more like close that. to five hundred overall. For honestly, for some reason, our deck tech videos did really they did. well. <laughs> they uh, and they got a lot of. <laughs> and we thank you well. for that. I guess we must be doing something, uh, right or something. But yeah, we'll. Uh, we are just starting this, so but please, we will, we will, we are trying our best to improve our overall content and production but yeah we hope to keep making these videos in the future so uh s stay tuned and we'll try to stay on a constant basis during this quarantine this tough time and come out with the uh, really interesting videos that everybody likes and before we end this uh we just like to remind everyone to stay safe stay clean and spore frog yep. spore frog so Spore see uh, Spore everybody frog. in the next video. See ya. Spore frog.